Disgraced tenant media founder Lauren Chen was called before the Standing Committee on Public Safety and National Security to talk to them about how Russia influences the media in Canada. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Lauren Chen and her husband founded a company called Tenant Media. It's basically... uh, a bunch of people who, you know, just influencers and whatnot. And they were recently charged with the modern day version of sedition, which we're calling Russian misinformation. They allegedly have accepted money from Russian organizations to attempt to influence the Americans. Now this same sort of investigation is ongoing in Canada. We've added Russia, we've got India, we've got a whole bunch. And so the Public Safety and National Security Committee called Lauren Chen to, because she's a Canadian, called her to appear before the uh, committee and answer some questions and perhaps shed some light on some of the the tactics and whatnot that they are utilizing. Now, Ms. Chen came with a lawyer. Mrs. Chen, I suppose, came with a lawyer. And, um, well, I'll let you, I'll let you hear it for yourself. Um, seeing as how my lawyer is not going to be able to we do request that this opening statement, which we have also submitted in writing, be uh, filed to the exhibit to speak for itself. Is the committee in agreement with this? Yes. Okay. Farewell. Go ahead. Um, did you Honorable wish to make... members of this? Go ahead. Sorry. No problem. I will. I'll read it here. Honorable members of this committee and clerk of the committee, La Rose. I am here today as required by the summons delivered to me. My understanding is you wish to ask me questions about a subject you are studying with a view of making recommendations as part of your legislative role. My understanding is that the subject you are studying is, quote, Russian interference and its information campaigns in Canada, end quote. In principle, I have no issue testifying before your committee. However, as you know, Canada and the United States are democratic countries that value civil rights. One right, which is particularly important, is the presumption of innocence and its companion right to remain silent. Both Canada and the United States strongly value the right to be free from self-incrimination. Presently, I am a target of a criminal investigation in the case of the United States v. Kalashnikov, 24 CR 519, Southern District, New York, 2024. As such, I am entitled to certain protections given to me under the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution which provides that I cannot be forced to potentially incriminate myself while testifying under oath. After consulting with counsel, both in Canada and the United States, I have concluded on their advice that answering questions from this committee could reasonably provide a, quote, link in the chain toward a possible indictment against me with respect to the above-mentioned or related proceedings. I recognize that the difficulty is that the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution does not apply in Canada. I am aware that I have no right to plead the fifth before this committee. I've been advised, and I do believe, the one policy reason behind Canada's lack of protection, similar to the American Fifth Amendment, is that Canada has a different form of protection located within Section 13 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which provides that if I testify in proceedings, I have the right not to have any incriminating evidence so given to be used to incriminate me in other proceedings, subject to exceptions that would not apply here. This is how the American protection against self-incrimination is not formally recognized in Canada. However, Section 13 of the Charter is not formally recognized in the United States. And so it would not be of assistance to me that I accede to answering any questions. Accordingly, it is with the above considerations in mind that I must indicate that I will not answer any questions posed to me once I appear before this committee. I note in taking this position that Section 7 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms protects me in situations where Section 13 does not apply, where life, liberty, or security interests are at stake. Considering the investigation taking place in respect of Kalashnikov, I verily believe that my refusal to answer questions is lawful and protected under Section 7 of the Charter. I also assert respectfully that in the relatively unique circumstances in which I find myself, Section 2D of the Canadian Bill of Rights, uh, SC 1960 C44, as well as the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, to which Canada is a signatory, protect my refusal to testify. Please note that my refusal is contingent solely on my legitimate concerns about possible self-incrimination. 
once the investigation has been completed and it is determined that there may be no future proceedings taken against me in respect of that or related matters, I would that this honorable committee be aware that I would be willing to reattend before it and answer all questions on such a future. Now, you would think a woman who was a founder of a media company would know to keep the microphone a little bit closer to her mouth. I, I can't make the... Uh, Recording much better than that. I mean, she didn't speak clearly. She didn't pick, go with the microphone inside of the headset that the government provided. And so what we're hearing there is distance from the microphone. Now, we hear her claim that she wanted to be protected from taking the Fifth Amendment in the United States where she's being you know, brought before the courts in the New York South District. I think she said Fifth District of New York. I... Um, then she noted that in Section 13, she's protected under Parliament, what we would you and I could call parliamentary privilege, and she doesn't want to answer any questions. So it's, she said it, uh, Section 7 so that she can't be held in contempt by the committee. This is just, you know, on the advice of her legal team, probably one American specialist and one Canadian specialist. And there was one specialist on Zoom, though, it was made clear before her opening statement that he is not permitted to say anything. He's permitted, or I'm assuming, you know, it could be a girl, whatever. I don't know. The lawyer was not permitted to talk to the committee or interject on her behalf, though I'm sure they had some sort of system of communication between the two of them, certainly. Now, they prepared that statement, which I found to be kind of interesting, um, what people misunderstand a lot about the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution is that it protects you from incriminating yourself, which is to say you might say something in the course of the investigation that would say, hey, aha, ha, you, so you are guilty. But what I heard was a woman say that I'm going to keep my mouth shut. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I mean, don't misunderstand me. I get that she has the right to say nothing. And I, I assure you that there are people in this world who would be like, yeah, that don't say nothing, say nothing. However, when you plead the fifth, you are also indicating that there might be something that you could be saying to incriminate yourself. After she said all of that, she was, she was scheduled for two hours. And I don't have all of them because I got bored. But here is a, a couple of examples of how she answered every single question from every single parliamentarian. For the reasons already given, I have no comment. For the reasons already given, I have no comment. For the reasons already given, I have no comment. That was all <laughs> she said. I mean, they were they made these articulate questions, and they were trying to, you know, they were trying to find a way to get her to say anything, but she just stuck to her guns. I mean, as far as I watched through it, she didn't have anything to say beyond I don't I have no comment. Which I suppose is why she wanted to be protected from from contempt, because committees have the right to charge you with, like Parliament has the right to con charge you with contempt if you decide that you're not going to answer their question. It's funny that I that the government is still chasing down all of these um, Russian leads. They say nothing about China. They talk about India and they talk about Russia. And. We all know that the re the biggest source of misinformation in this country because of recent revelations in committee the largest single source of misinformation is the government themselves so i think that we need to you and i as canadians understand that the when the when you have your parliamentarian screaming that you should be your speech should be limited rather than worry about the fifth amendment of the constitution of the united states we should be worrying about the first amendment of the constitution of the united states which is the right to say what we want to say without being persecuted by the government. Now in Canada, we don't necessarily have that ironclad pr protection, which is something that we need to be addressing. We need that ironclad protection so that governments don't come in and start to tell us that we are going to not be able to work because we don't agree with something that they had to say on the internet. I mean, that's it's happening all around. So I don't blame Ms. Chen for coming in there and saying, I'm not going to answer a single question and you know, come what may, I have the protections. And if you want to try and charge me, go ahead. I have, I have a legal team that is giving me this advice and we are prepared to come in front of a judge. You and I have to look at the fact that we all need these levels of protection. We need them more ironclad than the Canadian Bill of Rights grants us. Because step one, the first section of the Bill of Rights says that they can nullify it anytime they want, which is how they invoke the Emergencies Act in the trucker convoy 
All right, more on that later. For now, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.